there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Plymouth. This is my church. Amen. And your church. Amen. Amen. And we've come from all around the DMV today to be in fellowship one with the other. We may have had some trials this week and we may have had some push and pull, but we are grateful that we are here today in the house of God among those who call themselves Christians. Amen? Amen. 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 If you're happy today, let me see a wave. And if you're joining us and listening to our podcast live, you do a wave too. Amen. Amen. Everybody do a wave. We are just delighted, just delighted to be here. It's a nice day, and I am grateful that God saw fit to keep me alive, to to wake me up this morning with my mind fully closed on him, to make sure that my heart was still beating. I may have had some problems getting up and down the stairs, but I'm grateful to be in the house among the living. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Mother and Father Spirit, we're thankful to be present today. We invite and invoke your presence, your wisdom, your love, your compassion, your mercies, and your grace. We have come to receive a blessing, but let us also be equally prepared to be a blessing. We pray these blessings in your holy and gracious name. Let the church say, Amen. 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 And please join me in reading our statement of faith. Page 11 in the hymnal. And reading together. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit. God of our Savior Jesus Christ and God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into church, to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Join me now in the singing of our hymn of preparation, He's So Real, found in the African American Heritage Hymnal number 237. He's So Real. And I want you to sing it like this week, You had a touch from God. And if you didn't have a touch from God, you're going to plant your seed now to have a touch from God. He's so real to me.
pure, refreshing waters, we cleanse the heart and soul, and wash away the sorrows when God is in control. Burdens become lighter when to Him we pray, and the outlook brighter to cheer us on our way. Again,
We invite you to reaffirm your faith as members of the Church of Jesus Christ. Do you affirm your faith in God as your Father, in Christ as your Lord, and in the Holy Spirit as your strength? Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God being shared regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of the congregation as it serves the community and the world? Let us, the members of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ, express a warm, hospitable welcome and affirm our mutual ministry. Congregation, would you please stand? And together we say, we welcome you with joy as partners in the common life of the church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the church of Jesus Christ. God grant that together we may continue to grow in his knowledge and love and the new existence of our risen Lord. And now I'm going to ask you if you all will turn to the the congregation. And let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending to us Jeb, Vanessa, and Dolores, that we may work together in serving the needs of others. Confirm in us the power of your covenant that we may live in your spirit and so love each other that we may have among us same mind which was in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we will extend the line to the fellowship. We'll call the music forward to do that. And the ministers, please extend the line to the fellowship. We're so delighted that Chloe is a part of this, this new beginning.
of celebration when we invite others to be a part of our congregation. It means that there is a space and a place that they found welcoming here at Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. I think that is something to celebrate. Amen. 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 All right, just a couple of announcements we'd like to draw your attention to because I am anxious to hear Minister Isaac's song message for us. He was wonderful this morning and you know, when you preach it the second time, you feel a fresh new anointing. So I know he's ready to bless us. But before we hear Reverend uh, Minister Isaac Lawson, we're going to hear first from Reverend Brown to bring us an announcement. Amen. There's been a group rehearsing here. And uh, as a thank you for having them rehearse here. They're going to do a play for us, a benefit called Pray for the Dead. And this benefit is for to collect money for construction. Now, I have some announcements here. They're outside on the, in the, what do you call it? The tournament? Yeah, it's out there. And, and uh, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, but if you go to have $20 in the bottom, okay, okay, no matter. When you come, you want to want a donation. So they're outside, take a look at it. We hope that you come to the play to raise money for construction of the church. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Brown. We're going to continue with just a few announcements that we want to draw your attention to. Um, Wednesday is our dial-up and power-up prayer call, 6 o'clock in the morning, right in the middle of the week. So I invite you to tune in and have that power blast of energy and the conference bridge numbers in your program and also in the e-newsletter. Uh, for those of you who joined by landline, you know that old-fashioned way we used to talk on the phone, then there may be some, some toll charges, so please be sure that you're mindful of that as well. Uh, we are continuing with our midweek service at 6.30 in the chapel. If the chapel temperature is fine, we'll be in the chapel. If not, we may be in the sanctuary, so we ask for your flexibility. But we are delighted to be blessed with a reflection on our statement of faith. And Reverend Brown brought the word last Thursday, and did he do some deep teaching for us? He did. This, absolutely. This week, we're going to continue our reflections of our statement of faith, which we read every second Sunday. So it is an opportunity for us to deepen and embody those principles and tenets in our statement of faith. So please come out and please bring a friend. Deacon Mims will bring the preached word for us. Amen. Amen. And we want to remember to extend a warm invitation to our members, uh, our friends, and the community at large to participate in tomorrow's Moral Values Declaration. Yes. Reverend Hagler and a number of us have been working behind the scenes and in front of the scenes to create a new Moral Values Movement. And if you don't think our morals and our civility needs reviving, in the time of the, the horrible, uh, demonic, and, and horrible talk that our political leaders are engaged in, then let me tell you we're wrong. So if you have not signed on to the Moral Values Declaration, I invite you to do so by simply going to www.moralvalues.com. Did I get that right, Minister Jason? It's right. Dot org. Thank you. I'm just telling you to see if you were listening. <laughs> Amen. And so we're, we are gathering tomorrow at 1030 in front of the Wilson Building. So if you've got some time and you want to be a part of a new movement and an important movement that's grounded in biblical justice, then we are calling for you to be there. All right. And we're going to pre present our moral declaration. And so please, please, please come. I know if Reverend Hagler was here, he would be, you know, hitting the drums to, to, to please be there. So 11 o'clock is the official start of the uh, uh, public action. And then the gathering takes place at 1030. Now, Reverend Boyd, I can't make it. So I'm going to ask you to hold a space in your prayer time for the, for the public action, for the gathering, and for a more revival for our church. Does everybody understand? Amen. 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 So we will be standing up for workers' rights, returning citizens, displaced residents, 
public education, the issues that are often not highlighted in the capacity that they should be addressed, we are bringing those issues and highlighting those issues for our local uh, political leaders so that they can be more accountable to the people that they say they serve. Amen? Amen. Uh, I want to just point out, too, that the women's ministry is hosting what we call Stewardships is Hard Work. And it is a fundraising campaign to benefit the coffers of the church. Every now and then, you got to put some extra money into the church. And so we are hoping, through your important and generosity, that we would deliver on the fourth Sunday in October, which I believe is the 23rd of October, we would like to deliver a check of $5,000 to go directly to the church's budget. I think that is doable and reasonable. And I think we're going to exercise a lot of faith. So we're asking the women if you would contribute $50 to this fundraising effort. And you should have either uh, envelopes in your program or in the pews. So if you don't have your envelope, please, please, please make sure you get one. Um, and men, we don't want to leave you out. We, we, we want you to be a part of this as well. So if you would be so kind as to help us do this uh, effort, this fundraising effort, we would appreciate it. And more about uh, the plans around when we say are forthcoming. I do believe I have gotten everything in that I was supposed to get in. If not, I'm sure someone will tell me later yes. in the service. Yes. Uh, see what I mean? Dr. Crockett. Thank you, Dr. Crockett. Uh, the health ministry is planning, I'm sorry, the women's ministry is planning to, to, to host Grandparents Day, uh, sponsored by the Grandparents Committee. And we are celebrating and honoring Grandparents Day on September 24th. And if you have not had the opportunity to get your submissions in for the, Ju the Jim's new newsletter, you have until next Sunday to do so. So we are extending the deadline. Please just take a moment to write a paragraph or two about lessons learned from your grandma and your grandpa and young people, children, teens, tweens. You guys have got some wonderful grandparents, some wonderful godparents. Spend a moment with them and ask them some important questions about their lives. And we'd like for you to, as well, make a submission. Again, it's extended to September 24th. And I believe that announcement is in your program. Okay, Renee. Uh, could you uh, make an announcement about the Board of Social Actions of September 25th? Can you talk on mass incarceration here at the church? So Renee, who works in the Board of Social Action, re reminds us that there will be a talk back on the criminal injustice system um, on Sunday, September 25th from 1 to 4 downstairs in the lower lot in the lower hall. Thank you. And we all know how important these conversations of mass incarcerations are. So if this is an issue you don't know anything about or one that you are intimately involved in, then we invite you to this talk back. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sharon, what did I begin? Thank you very much. I think that was on this piece of paper here. Um, so again, we have uh, nominations, and nominations will be done from the floor on next Sunday. Uh, we still have opportunities for you to serve in the church, in various ministries and boards. And if you have some resources, your mind is a resource. Your influence is a resource. And we know money is an influence. But these are the ways that you can come together and help us provide fresh, innovative leadership. All right? And you can make that known to Sharon and Joan and some other people who serve on that committee. And I think they're listed in the program. Amen? Amen. Yes, ma'am. I know Sunday school teachers. Sunday school kicks off today, and you still need Sunday school teachers. Amen. That was from our Sunday School Superintendent, Johnny Mays Durant. So if you're interested in teaching Sunday School, then please see Ms. Durant 
and we know that Sunday school kicked off today, or kicks off today. Amen. Amen. All right, I hope I got everybody's announcement made. So let's now go to the next part of our service. I want you to pull out your purse, your wallet, your man bag, whatever you call it. Let me see them. Pull them out. Okay, that's good. I see your tithing offerings. I see your contribution. So put your hand over it. Put your hand over your purse. I know we're going to do some old-fashioned Pentecostal Holy Ghost stuff. Okay. Amen. So we would invite our trustees to please come forward to get your checks out, your money. And if you're listening to us in cyberspace and you're on our website, you can go right to our website and make a contribution there if you are so kind to do so. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Today we're taking up two offerings. The first offering is our general collection, and our second offering will go to the work that we do, um, our benevolence fund. And I can witness firsthand how this fund has helped so many people in our church, people that we don't even know about, people in the community. So be generous if you can as well. Amen. Let us pray. Mother and Father Spirit, thank you for these blessings. Thank you for the tithe. Thank you for each contribution to the various ministries and wards in our church. We know that some of us may not have, so we pray a special blessing for those. And we bless those purses and those checks, those man bags. We bless them so that they would fill up to capacity and in the overflow that we would know to be more generous in helping and serving others. These blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
would like to call all of the children and the youth and the young adults forward. Well, not young adults, but the children and the youth, if you will come forward at this point so we can pray for them and send them down to Sunday school. And a good thing is I saw them already moving before the call was made. So they're coming on down now. says the Lord. Plans to give you a future and plans to give you a hope. God has a future for each and every one of you. And God has a hope for each and every one of you. Trust it. We just sing how wonderful God is. You'll learn how wonderful God is. And we'll be here to help remind you in those times when you need it. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just come giving you thanks for these gifts that are here in front of us right now, God. For indeed, they are our future, God, as well as they are our present. We don't squander their gifts, but we give you thanks for them, and we promise to do all that we can to make sure that they are able to go forward in the way that you have called them to go forward, God. So right now, we just ask for your continued Blessings upon each and every one of their lives. We pray that you continue to keep them safe in school. We pray that you are allowing them to get the knowledge that they need to succeed. And God, we know that it is tough. It is tough in high school. It is tough in school. But God, may they feel you there, even in the rough times. And God, may you be a church that in the rough times know how to support our youth, our children, even as they grow into young adults. And God bless our Sunday school providers, bless the parents, the guardians, the grandparents, the neighbors. God, let us be a church and a people that cares about our youth and our children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Lawson, can we announce Mrs. Tucker's birthday is today? Reverend Boyd is trying to give to me this arsenal of material that I have. <laughs> yeah, all right. I told the church earlier today that I decided to do only two verses. And in seminary, when we have to do an exegesis, when we have to do the research about the text, it's a inclination to say, well, you know, to keep down the research, I'll pick the shortest text, and that's what I'll use. And I had a professor that said, what is the shortest text that she could pick? And she said, she chose and Jesus wept. And she said, how much research she had to put into that to actually make that work, <laughs> she would have chosen something much longer. But indeed, I have chosen two verses today. Um, and if you will join me now in the reading of it, it's Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. If you're using the Pew Bible, you can find it on page 908. Again, it's Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. And it reads, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured 
saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Not beyond grace, sinners at the communion table. If you will, pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we just come right now seeking to have an encounter with you. May your word be preached. May your word be heard. May your word be acted upon. Amen. 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 So with this text, like I said, it's a short text, but I really struggled in the beginning with this text. And I struggled to think of where do I start with this text? And I remembered, and it sort of just hit me, that Jesus in this text has a really difficult time with image. Jesus in this text has an image problem. And indeed, if Jesus was around today doing his ministry today, he would most likely need a public relations specialist. He would need someone who has the skill and savvy to help to package an image, to package and to do his image for him. But I say that because, and just to ground the text a bit, that people had long waited for the Messiah to come. People had long anticipated the person who would come in the midst of oppression, the person who would come and help to liberate them from the Roman Empire, to liberate them from heavy taxation, someone who would come and usher in the kingdom of God, this realm, this new realm on earth as it is in heaven. That's the prayer that we pray. But people had long waited for this Messiah to show up, And in waiting for that, they had long imagined how this Messiah would be. (laughs) You could probably imagine. And they thought, okay, here we're going to have the one who we've been waiting for, who's going to come from on high and do the work that we've been expecting him to do. And what they get is not a Jesus from on high, this grand Christological figure, but what they get is a Jesus from below. What they get is not a pious Jesus, but what they get is a Jesus who eats with tax collectors and who's hanging out with sinners. What they get is a Jesus who doesn't quite seem to know the right type of people to hang with. A Jesus that doesn't quite know how to be who they expected him to be. And we can look through the scriptures because if we take a look at the scriptures, we'll see that all throughout the gospel of Luke, all throughout it, Jesus has an issue with his image particularly when it comes down to the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus has this encounter with them, and I'm just going to pull out my notes now, but if we look at Luke 5.30, if we look at Luke 5.30, it says, and this is Jesus again being invited to the feast with Levi. And actually starting with 29, and it says, Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a large company of tax collectors. Oh, shucks, again with the wrong group of people. A large company of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. And the Pharisees and the scribes 
the bearers of the gatekeepers of the law murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? To which Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, because right, the righteous don't need any salvation, right? The righteous have salvation. We don't need Jesus. We're going to tell Jesus what Jesus needs to do. But he says, I have come not for the righteous, but the sinners to repent. Again, if we look at Luke 7, 29 through 30, again, Jesus has a run in with these same groups of people. And in 29, he says, and it goes on again. He says, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. But when they heard this, all the people in the tax collectors justified God, having been baptized with the baptism of John. So here it is, the tax collectors, the wrong group of people, are the ones who have justified God. Having been baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. And to this response, Jesus says, to what then? shall I compare the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and yet you say, he has a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus has an image problem. They call him a drunkard, a glutton. Look at him. Every time we turn it around, Jesus is over there eating, <laughs> over there eating, over there drinking wine. And not only that, with the wrong group of people, over there with those sinners, with those other people, those people who are not us, those people, or put differently, you people, you people beyond God's grace, you people beyond God's grace. Great. And yet, this is exactly the site of the inbreaking of God. How amazing is that? This is exactly the site of the inbreaking of God. And Jesus' image problem didn't start here, but it started with him being born in Nazareth. From the very beginning, Jesus is this savior of the world, but born in a manger. Our savior wouldn't be born in a manger. But then born in a manger, and he's from Nazareth nonetheless. Maybe you all remember when they said, what good can come out of Nazareth? What good? Surely the savior of the world wouldn't come from that side of the tracks. Surely he would have come from a more respectable part of town, a better pedigree of, or class of people. Surely that's not our savior over them with those people. And yet exactly that's where God decided to inbreak into human reality. Not from on high, but from below. 
not with the powerful, but with those who struggle for power. Not with the oppressors, <laughs> but those who struggle against oppression as the ministry of the gospel. This is where Jesus inbreaks. And I think it's something really particular about that. I just came across a poem by Edwin Markham, and he wrote a poem called Outwitted. And he says, he drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had a wit to win. He drew a circle, or we drew a circle, that took him in. In a world where there is talk of not only drawing a circle, but of building Mexican-funded walls around that circle to shut out the other, who, let's be truthful, is always seen as sinful or somehow morally defective, the invitation to the communion table is an invitation to amazing grace. The Pharisees and scribes concerned with making Jerusalem great again by maintaining the that's just how we've always done it. The Pharisees and they're trying to maintain the status quo is clueless to the amazing grace. They're clueless to the amazing grace that Jesus is extending. But, catch this, it's the tax collectors and the sinners, those who are despised, the shameful, the marginalized, the throwaway people. It's the tax collectors and sinners who were drawing near to God. And drawing near to Jesus, to hear the words of Jesus, to experience the works of Jesus, to see sight restored, to see the the wounded healed, to see the excluded somehow be re-included into the human family. It is the tax collectors and sinners who come to accept The Pharisees and scribes have drawn a circle around who they believe to be the beneficiaries of God's grace. And how dare Jesus, I mean, how dare Jesus welcome and eat with those who are beyond grace? How dare he? But indeed, God's grace is daring. God's grace is daring in its reach. And God's grace is bold in its approach. God's grace is the kind of grace that can make a wretch say amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Though many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come, tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. Yeah, when this flesh and heart shall fail, like it always will, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God, who called me here below, will forever be mine. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise 
than when we first begun. Plymouth, if you take two things, just two things, away with you today, please remember these two things. One, you are not beyond God's grace. Please hear me, because people will tell you all kinds of things about yourself. People will say all kinds of stuff about Maybe you're not the right person. Ooh, you, you don't know that person's past. And by past, they mean yesterday. But <laughs> people will say all kinds of things, but remember that none of us are beyond God's grace. Know that God still calls out to you in that grace to draw nearer. So be embraced by that grace. Allow it to envelop you and like a moth to a flame, go towards it. Go towards it. Draw nearer to God. Seek God in all that you do. No matter what you have done, no matter what people tell you you can't do, draw near to God. Even if you're doubting God's grace, still draw near to God's grace. We humans like to place a lot of conditions and a lot of prerequisites on love. But Jesus, Emmanuel, the God with us, welcomed and ate with sinners where they were. Not after they put on a suit and tie. Not after they wore the appropriate stockings for the occasion. Not after they learned the phrase blessed and highly favored. But where they were. Go to God as you are. Two, or secondly, we are not called to be Pharisees. We are not called to be Pharisees. There's a lot of times when we can look back and say, oh, those Pharisees just didn't get it. Like, they were there. Why did they not get it? Why couldn't they just go with Jesus? And yet the reality is that a lot of times we act exactly the way the Pharisees acted. We too want to shut out Those who don't look like us, don't act like us, don't pronounce Maryland the same way that we do. We like to be Pharisees. But we have to remember that we are not Pharisees. And I say that because I say Merlin, but anyway. We are not called to be Pharisees. But we are all called to ministry. As Christians, we are called to bear witness to the far-reaching, transformative love of God. We are called to bear witness no matter where we are, whether someone calls us minister, reverend, lay, whatever they call us, we are called where we are as lawyers, as doctors, as chefs to bear witness to the glory and the love of God, where we are, wherever we find ourselves. That's what, it's me- what it means to be the priesthood of all believers. And if we are to talk about the love of God in the language of our budget meetings, then God's love isn't a savings account, but it's an in and out. We don't get blessed to be highly favored, but we get blessed to be a blessing. Thus, no matter how much we may want to, we have to resist. (laughs) We have to resist drawing circles around the blessings of God that seek to keep others out. We have to constantly be willing to draw our circles much 
wider. And when our arms can't reach, to be able to pass the chalk because someone else can take over drawing. In her book, Out of the Depths, Women's Experiences of Evil and Salvation, Yvonne Guevara, a Brazilian sister of Notre Dame and one of Latin American's leading theologians, she wrote, the suffering of the crucified, of a man upon the cross, even if it has become the Christian paradigm of suffering, is certainly no greater than that of prostitutes stoned to death, of a mother whose child is wrenched from her, of revolutionaries struggling for liberty, of so many nameless men and women who have fought for the good of their brothers and sisters. Moreover, the suffering of the crucified is not greater than mass murder of indigenous peoples, of Africans, of Jews, of Arabs. It is not greater than that of women who see their children die of hunger because of the greed of those who hold economic power. I've always appreciated the fact that Reverend Hagler mentions during communion that in remembering Jesus' broken body and spilled blood, we remember the broken bodies and spilled blood of those who too have fought in the struggle for liberation, who too have fought in the struggle for justice and fought for liberation and justice as, and you have to get this, who fought for liberation and justice as the inbreaking of the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, who fought for liberation and justice as ministry of God, as Christians engaged in faith-filled and faithful ministry. Because when we eat this bread and we drink of this cup, we do not do it only in remembrance of Jesus, but we do it in remembrance of Jesus the Christ crucified on behalf of and in solidarity with the marginalized. At this table, this table so beautifully prepared by our diaconate team, are present broken bodies. At this table is present the shed blood of those who have been exploited, of the victims of genocide, yes. of those who have gone disappeared around the country. Because as we partake of this bread and cup, we become brothers and sisters of one body with the same blood of Christ flowing through it. And this, my brothers and sisters, is tough. It's tough stuff for us to wrap our hearts around, for us to wrap our heads around it. And it's tough sometimes for us to get our spirits into it. But there's good news. And that good news is that none of us are beyond God's grace. And it is in that amazing grace of God that we are enabled to go forward doing the work and ministry that Christ has called each and every one of us to do. And that is to constantly open up that communion table. To open it up. To invite those in who truly need to experience the grace of God. And that day, that grace of God may just be you. Be ready to be the amazing grace of God. And I'm going to wrap it up there. Amen. Amen.
then as we sing hymn number 271, I now invite you, if you are able to sing, to stand, if and are if you able to stand and sing with us, hymn number 271, Amazing Grace. <laughs> We also take this time to open up this place here, to open up the altar if you need prayer, or if you want to have a connection with this community, a connection with Christ, a connection with God, or if you just need a prayer or a healing touch or someone just to let you know that God's grace is indeed real and amazing, this is your time to come forward as well.
eat of it and do it remember the one who loves us, saves us, and redeems us. It is in Christ we take and eat. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come to you with thankful hearts once again for allowing us to come to your table of praise, to come not because we must, but because we may. Father, we thank you for this cup of blessing. Thank you. And what it represents for us through the life of Jesus Christ. We ask now that you consecrate unto us this cup of blessing. Let it be a sign and let it be a seal of the everlasting love. Christ has expressed for us the same love that we express to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body. Do it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Yeah. And now we have that the afternoon to please serve our congregation.
And now as we prepare to depart from this space, our closing recessional lead on, O King Eternal, found on page 477 of the African American Heritage. We will ask you if you are able to stand to please stand for the benediction. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God. And may this week we find a way to let someone at the table, a stranger, a marginalized one, a tax collector, may we open our hearts so that it can fill us completely. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, May it remain with you always until we meet again. Amen. Amen.